Hello everybody and welcome back to the new VR news. As always, I am Mateo311 and this is your one channel for everything VR related. Today, once again, we have a lot of new VR games to go over. I have some pretty exciting stuff I can't wait to share. The Tundra Tracker Kickstarter is here and we're going to check out some hidden features for the Oculus Quest. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into this with a few channel updates. Next Sunday on April 11th, I am doing a 12 hour live stream. This will run from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. A lot of your favorite fellow YouTubers will be joining me live, and we're running hourly giveaways for some of my favorite VR titles. I'm also going to dedicate some time to meet you guys in game. We'll take a vote and see what you guys want to play. Gorilla Tag, VR Chat, it doesn't matter to me, I will meet you guys in game. There's a link in the description for the live stream, so make sure to click it and turn your notifications on. And just one more quick announcement, I am now the very proud owner of a B Haptics X40 tax suit. So you can expect a review coming soon, but first I want to play every single game that I have that supports this hardware. Okay, so while we're talking about updates, let's move into some VR game updates. A frequent flyer in this category is Population 1, and they have a new private room beta that we can check out. This allows you to set up your own room and invite 17 of your friends to a match of either traditional squad mode or war mode. I unfortunately don't have 17 friends, so this isn't really for me, but I do really enjoy the concept because the player base can make or break the Population 1 experience. Now while this is cool and all, I'm still wondering what Population 1's holdup is for releasing a solo mode. There are plenty of players who just want to go at it alone. Okay, so moving on to another popular shooter, Pavlov Shack is now available on the Oculus App Lab. If you're not familiar with Pavlov, you really should be. This is basically the closest thing to Counter-Strike in VR. This title is currently the most popular PC VR shooter, and I'm sure Quest gamers will love it too. When it does officially release for the Oculus Quest, it'll be $24.99 on all platforms, and we also got another little surprise from developer Dave Bills. As he confirmed, this will eventually be a PlayStation VR 2 title. Now, if you're not interested in online PvP titles, the single-player game Warhammer 40k Battle Sister has just received the Horde mode update. Back in February, developers Pixel Toys gave us a much welcome graphical update for the Oculus Quest 2, and now they're back with this endless style Horde mode. You'll battle against continuous waves of difficulty increasing enemies, trying to hold out for as long as possible. This scenario fits in perfectly with the lore of the Warhammer 4K universe, where there's constant battles of complete desperation. Now currently this mode only has one map, but two more will be coming in the near future, and eventually you'll be able to play this in co-op mode with a friend. So here's a reason for you to jump back into Warhammer 40k Battle Sister. Now if you were looking to jump into a newer title for free, the Hitman 3 Starter Pack is now currently available until April 5th. This will allow you to play the full first mission free of charge, and it's a great way to find out if you want to purchase the game. I personally don't think the Hitman title is my style, I'm not a big fan of stealth, but now because of this amazing deal, I'm gonna check it out tonight. Just a reminder, the Sony Play at Home event is also still running, which has some amazing VR games that you have to check out, like Moss and Astrobot. I just started playing Thumper, and that's also another excellent title. Speaking of excellent titles, let's jump into this week's releases, starting with Swarm. Now, most of you already know this, I am a community manager for Green Sky Games, the developers of Swarm, but I only signed on after playing this game and being quite impressed. Swarm is like playing Spider-Man with guns meets Space Invaders. It's a very frantic, surprisingly strategic arcade shooter. Even on the game's lowest difficulty, it's still a challenge, and if you want to get on the leaderboard, it's going to be highly competitive. Swarm also features a cool little storyline, similar to what you see in Pistol Whip 2089. I've been discussing this title with a large group of beta testers and many fellow YouTubers, and the reactions have been extremely positive. Swarm will be available this week on April 8th for both the Oculus Quest and Rift platform, and will release on Steam later this year. Next Next up is Traffic Jam, also releasing on April 8th. In a world without stoplights, you're the only thing preventing complete chaos. Traffic Jam also features a party mode, allowing four friends to connect via their cell phone and help contribute to the chaos. Prior to the world falling apart, I used to do a local monthly VR game night. Traffic Jams is getting added to that list, and I'll obviously let you guys know what I think about it. Now while we're discussing these casual titles, we have yet another one releasing on April 8th, and that's Space Slurpees. Have you ever played the classic game Snake? I used to play this in school on my TI-82 calculator, but maybe I'm too old and you can't relate to that. 
Space Slurpees takes that addictive classic concept and brings it into VR. Obviously, things are going to get a lot more complex because you're no longer only in two dimensions. If you're a fan of casual games, this looks like an excellent title. If I get around to checking it out, I'll let you guys know what I think. Okay, so the last game in this week's release window is Speedy Gun Savage. You'll take on the role of an alien bounty hunter and travel to some truly unique locations. There's also a nice variety in enemies, and the graphics look great, but I think we're dealing with yet another wave shooter. We'll find out more when this game releases next Friday on April 9th. Okay, we have a few more games to cover, but their release window is a bit further out. Solaris Offworld Combat is finally coming to the PlayStation VR. It'll be available for digital download this May, with physical copies coming in June. I personally really enjoyed Solaris Offworld Combat, but it's struggled to maintain a player base on both the Oculus Quest and PC VR. Let's hope the PlayStation VR version will revitalize the player base. Speaking of delayed PSVR titles, we got some new footage and the release window for Sam and Max, this time it's virtual. Sam and Max is a quirky, narrative-driven adventure title, which is set to release on the Oculus Quest this June, coming to PC VR later in the year, and finally the PlayStation VR in 2022. There's not a lot of story-driven VR content out there, so I'm definitely intrigued by this title. Another intriguing title is the prototype horror rhythm game that Joyway is currently working on. Joyway is the studio that gave us Stride, the parkour Mirror's Edge style shooter, and it looks like now they're working on a creepy visceral mix between Beat Saber and Pistol Whip. Now there's no official release date or working title name, but we did get a look at the aesthetic direction they want to move in, and it looks absolutely fantastic. Slicing creepy creatures in half rather than blocks seems much more appealing to me. Okay guys, we have one final game story. This is a Kickstarter for Gym Masters. Gym Masters is a story-driven fitness game. The title is made up of multiple physically demanding mini games. So you'll have to break a sweat in order to progress. As you get further into the game, you'll get to build out your own personal gym. The Kickstarter is currently over $5,000, nearly half of the goal they're looking for. With 25 days remaining, I'm hopeful that they'll hit that goal, and I think the overall concept is excellent. VR can definitely increase your physical fitness, and if this title is done correctly, it'll be rewarding both in and outside of the game. Okay guys, that's finally the last game update for this week. But while we're on the topic of Kickstarters, we have to mention the Tundra Trackers. They've absolutely crushed their goal of $250,000 in less than 24 hours. They're currently sitting at nearly $900,000, and that's just a testament to how high the demand is for cheap full-body tracking. Now I'm happy to report that I will be getting a sample to test either this month or next, and currently on paper, they look like a much better option than the Vive 3.0 trackers. They're cheaper, lighter, and you only need one dongle. We just have to see how they end up performing. Speaking of performance, how's your Oculus Quest doing these days? Version 26 definitely brought a fair share of issues to the Oculus Quest platform, and while version 27 has resolved some of them, users are now reporting poor performance with the Oculus Link and virtual desktop. There's also been some reported general stability issues and UI issues. My buddy Steve Nose even did some Oculus Link bandwidth testing, and it appears his bandwidth has recently been cut in half. Personally, I rarely use this feature and just prefer my Valve Index, so I wouldn't be able to tell if there was a performance degradation. I have, however, recently experienced some additional in-game stuttering, and this is on titles that I didn't previously see it. Warhammer 40k Battle Sister was recently running much worse than expected. I did a complete playthrough of this game and do not remember any stuttering. I also rebooted my headset just in case, but that hasn't resolved the issue. Now again, this can just be a me issue because I have plenty of those. Now it's possible the implementation of some of the new features I'm about to discuss is causing some of that performance degradation people are seeing, but that is complete speculation. I'm glad Facebook is constantly implementing new features, but please don't do it at the expense of performance. While we're talking about hidden features, Resident Quest Guru Basti564 has been all over the place lately. He jumped into my Discord and hit me up with a bunch of the features he found. And he also has an application available on GitHub, which you can sideload, which will give you access to these features. We've previously discussed intrusion detection, so you'll know if someone walks into your play space, but there's other options like portals, little customizable windows that will let you see into the real world, which is ideal if you want to do something like be able to see your keyboard. As Basti continued his deep dive, we found the potential for other new features. 
we might be getting the ability to see phone notifications in the Oculus Quest, and there's also direct references to enabling 120 hertz mode. I'm always glad to see these new features on the Oculus headset, but they really need to be more careful with their version releases. This is now two back-to-back -back headache inducing updates. Okay, so one last quick story about Facebook. Mike Doran, the director of production at Oculus Studios, had some very welcome news for us. The studio is planning on releasing deeper, more complex, and longer games. The only caveat is they're coming down the pipeline in three to seven years. Now this is in line with what I said in a recent video discussing the evolution of VR games. With the dramatic development shift to the Oculus Quest rather than PC VR, we'll have to wait a while before we see this higher end content. Now honestly, I think it'll be less than three years before some of these titles start to pop up. I'm expecting Facebook to surprise us with Lone Echo 2 for the Oculus Quest, either sometime later this year or into next year. But just keep in mind, Ready at Dawn had originally planned to release that game for PC VR last year, and that date disappeared after Facebook acquired the company. So it's very likely they're working with a already complete game and just backporting it to the Oculus Quest, which is definitely faster than making a brand new game from scratch. Scratch. But like usual, we're just gonna have to wait and see what happens. Okay, everybody, that was today's new VR news. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. If you're new here, consider subscribing. And as always, I'll see you guys on next time.